just a quick little video of these uh, six volt panels. They're rated at six volts, 200 milliamps. And you can see here I'm charging a 3.75 or 3.7 battery, 3.6 battery that was fully drained. And about 20 minutes ago it was reading 3.25 volts. What happens is if they get loaded, if that drops below a certain number, it goes into an automatic shutoff mode at around 2.4 to 2.7 volts or something. So the battery just shuts down, doesn't let you drain it anymore. That's what happened with it last night when I was using it. So I throw it out here on the panel and you can see that uh, it's taking a real good charge off of this solar panel. Now this is maybe too good of a charge. I've got the panel going out of a diode. So it's dropping probably to about 6.8 to 7 volts open circuit. And you can see that I've got, I'll show you clearly here. I've probably got 240 milliamps going into this battery right now, which is, you know, pretty impressive for a six dollar solar panel. Um, now, if I take a, a look at the battery itself, let's see if we can get a, a voltage reading on that. Now I've always thought that there's a better way to do this, to control through um, a buck regulator or a chip. I know there's some chips out there for the controlling and maximum power point charging of these batteries. But you know, expense does come into consideration as well. So this has been charging for Oh, about 20 minutes and it's already gone from 3.25 to 3.55 so it definitely does work my thoughts were that if you had several of these in parallel you'd essentially have nothing to worry about because they say you should charge these at 4.2 volts at 500 milliamps and I even think you're supposed to back off on the current in the end. Right at the very end. They do have an overcharge protection circuit, but that's not going to let you fully charge the battery because what's going to happen is, is when the potential reaches high enough, the circuit will just shut off and the battery won't get fully charged. It's what's supposed to happen is that you're supposed to the circuit's supposed to kick in at something like about four volts and then really cut back on the current that it delivers to the battery and just give it a nice long easy fill up for those last point two volts. So it's my thinking that doing it this way, you're gonna rely on the internal protection of this battery at some point because you're using a fairly high potential compared to what it was designed for. But if you had a bunch of them in parallel, had a bit of an excess in that way, then chances are by the time you use it again, you wouldn't bring it into charge. You, you know, it wouldn't be a, a big issue because you probably wouldn't fully fill the batteries anyway. So if you have ideas of how to do this better, and I don't just mean by putting a 317 linear voltage regulator on it because Quite frankly, that's a very wasteful way of doing things, and I know I can do that. I can do constant voltage, constant current limitations with 317 and stuff like that, but those chips are just basically a bunch of resistors stuffed in a, in a, in a chip. They're, there's nothing miraculous about that. Anyway, you can see these little panels for six bucks are pretty kick-ass. They definitely perform the way they're stated to. Now, I use a little mirror, and I think I get a bit of a gain out of that. Um, it is kind of arguable, though. 
and you know the uh, the, the idea too of in in the wor in the hottest of summer times, the concept of creating hot spots and wrecking your panel is certainly a, a concern. I don't use them in August. I just use them in the in the off season. I use these little mirrors in front of them. Just give it a bit of a kick. But you can see it does work. Thanks for watching.